show with everything you could ever want to make or do right at your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And here's what's on today's show. Find out if just one piece of paper can become a hopping frog in our one minute make. And we show you how to make what all the stars are wearing, friendship bracelets. And in party fingertips, we show you how to make a piñata for a smashing good party. And for all the fingertip details, you can video the show and play it back. Look on the website or grab your pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Now, if you're going to be videoing fingertips each week, then you'll end up with a pile of tapes that look something like this. And to keep all of your tapes in order, just simply label them like this. And if you want your very own fingertip labels like our ones, then just log on to our website. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. And you'll be able to download, print off, and stick on. See, that'll teach you, won't it? Now, how good does this look? It looks really heavy as well, doesn't it? And it's got this really cool little combination lock thing here that clicks. You've got a secret compartment door there and a slot to put all of your money in. So how would you like your very own top security safe to keep all your savings, your loose change and all those things for your eyes only? Well, now you can with the help of fingertips. You're going to need to get a milk bottle lid like this, a chocolate dispenser and a washing powder box that's this shape. And you also need a tea bag box which has a flappy lid like this. Now put the lid on your tea bag box down and then you want to cut the whole of your box off with the lid down so you're actually cutting a bit of that off as well. So I'm just going to cut the last bit off and this will give you a nice square shape. So just cut that off there. And then once you've got the bottom of your box sorted, you need to bring in your washing up powder box. Now pop that down and then put your newly cut box on top of your washing powder box and just draw around the whole thing like that in the middle of it and then when you take it off you're left with this shape which will have a border around it of about three to four centimeters now next you want to get your chocolate dispenser and listen to this it makes a really cool noise like a lock hey listen to that and now you need to do is get some PVA glue pop that on the back there quite a nice big blob and just put this on your washing powder box with the hole facing to the top but slightly to the left like that then get your milk bottle top and just put some glue around the edge of it like that and then just stick this on top of your chocolate dispenser and when the glue has dried take a pencil and carefully push it in the middle of the top line that you've all already drawn and this allows you to cut along this line and the two lines down the side. Make sure you don't cut along the bottom because this is going to work as the hinge to your safe. And the way to get the hinge to work smoothly is get a ballpoint pen and just score it along like this. And you're going to cover this, so don't worry if it's messy. And then, when you open it up, it will be perfect. Not bad, eh? Then, cut out a rectangle in the top. This is for where your money's going to go. And make it big enough to hold your biggest coin. There we go. But don't make it too big, otherwise people will be able to look inside and see what you've got. Oh. And now it's time to shape your tea bag box to make your secret compartment. Now what you need to do is draw a diagonal line from one corner to about the middle and do the same on the other side and then cut this shape out so you get a box that has a higher back than the front. Then you need to paint the sides a black or a dark grey colour like that so it looks like a nice safe colour. Then, bring in your washing powder box, open your trap door, and just push your tea bag box inside. It should fit nice and snugly, like that. And then, get some PVA glue, and just spread some onto your door, like that. Right the way over. Then push the two together, like this, and watch this. There you have your secret compartment door. And now all you have to do is paint your fingertips money box safe. Now, we've gone for silver to give it a metallic look. And we've even added a strip of dark grey around the base to make it look really heavy. And how about a screw in each corner? But you know my favourite thing? Go on. A combination lock. Isn't that so clever? What a cool noise it makes. It is so good, isn't it? And it does look so real. And if you want to have a go at making your very own fingertips money box safe and you've recorded today's show, then watch the video back whenever you like. Or you could check out our fingertips website. All you need to do is click on top makes and all the the details will be there for you. But if you have that pen and paper ready right now, we'll go over it again. Firstly, cut the lid off a tea bag box. 
on your bigger box, mark the position of the tea bag box. And then stick on your chocolate dispenser. Then stick on the bottle top. Cut a hole in the front of your bigger box and make a slot for the coins in the top. Now make your secret compartment by cutting your tea bag box on a slant. Paint your smaller box and glue it into your safe. Paint your finished safe and you're done. So next time you want to stop sticky fingertips getting valuables, try making a fingertips money box safe. Got a minute? Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using stuff from around your house. Today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. Vern, this is all it takes. How are you going to make something out of a sheet of paper? Just a bit that. of paper. I'm going to show you now. Right then. We're not going to tell you what it is just yet, but let's see if you can guess along the way. Are you ready, Steve? I have, yeah. I've got a real frog in my throat. Oh, right I'm then. ready. Three, two, one, go! Okay, first thing I need to do is fold it over like a, a sailing boat, just like that. Then what I need to do is make like an arrow shape, just there. Ten seconds! Three, it looks up. like nothing at all. <laughs> okay, now I've got an X in the middle, you can see that. Fold that over, and then... Yeah, Eighteen seconds. Sort of like this. And then what I need to do is turn over again, and do the magic move, which is that. The magic move. Oh yes, oh. very nice. Fold it over. Fold this up. 30 seconds, that's half yes. the time gone. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Fold this over as well. I've got anything at all. I know. <laughs> don't worry, you're anything. <laughs> now I've got to fold. I'm forgetting my fold, fun. Sorry. Fold this in as well. It still doesn't look like look. anything. 40 oh. seconds. Please. Time now, aren't you, Steve? Normally finished by this point. Okay, stop the clock! Oh, 46. It's not bad, <laughs> eh? Not bad. What is it then? Well, look, if I put this on here like that, and this on here like that, oh. you can you can see it. See? Little froggy. Yeah, look, and oh, and it jumps. That, it does jump. It's, it's our jumping. very own fingertips hopping frog. Oh. Do you show me again one more time? Yeah, I will show you again because it, there is a lot of folds here. So first of all, get your sheet of paper and then fold it over like um, a sailing ship. So just imagine that's the sail and then you're going to make like an arrow. So there we are, you fold that over there. And now when you unfold everything, you've got an X in the middle, you see. Um, fold it over and you're going to fold the whole paper over to these points. And don't worry if you're not remembering all these folds, because there is a lot. Um, but if you're video today show, of course, you can watch it back uh, later on. And all the information is on our website. We'll give you the address at the end. Pinch the middle of the paper and that will flatten everything out like that. And now you just neaten everything up. So that goes up there. This one goes up there. And then you fold them in, again just to neaten it up, fold this one in as well, and now you make his feet look. You fold this up here, and that down there, and there is the shape of oh, the frog. That's brilliant. So I'll tell you what, once you've got the know-how, you could make a whole load of them. So go on, go hopping mad, and see if you can beat the clock. Now, are you having trouble trying to get that poster paint to stick to those shiny surfaces? Well, you need the fingertips adhesive additive. No, not glue. Washing up liquid. All you need is just one squirt. Then give it a mix. And painting on your poster paint no longer presents a problem. They're all the rage at the moment. All the pop stars are wearing them, all the film stars are wearing them, even TV presenters are wearing them. What am I talking about? Friendship bracelets. Any colour you like, any design you desire. So if you want to be cool at school and make a maker for your mates, then all you need to do is get plating. That's all it takes. And some coloured thread. Thank you, Stephen. And a safety pin. Why, oh, thank you. Now, the first thing you need to do is get three colours of thread and take about three strands of each colour. Now, tie a knot in the top of your thread and then get a pin and just carefully thread that through there and then you're ready to pin this to something. Stephen? You what? Oh, sorry. Cushion. Thank you very much. So, pin these to your cushion and then get plaiting. Now, if you're not quite sure how to plait, simply alternately pass the left strand over the middle one and then the right strand over the middle one and try to keep the threads nice and tight. Now keep doing this until you've got it about this long and then tie a nice tight knot in the end and then just take it off your cushion and remove the pin from your knot 
And now this is a tricky bit, tie it onto your wrist. You may need to get you to help you out, but it's a bit hard. Fern, allow me. Come oh, on. Oh, thank go. you, Steve. You ready? Isn't that sweet? There you go. Thank you very much. No problem. Now, once you've mastered how to do these, you could do all different ones. You could do one with three plaits. You could add some beads as you're plaiting, or even if you get really clever, try using nine strands of thread. But I tell you what, the best thing about making friendship bracelets is that you get to give them to a mate. Go on, Steven. Go on. Go on then. There you go. How Thanks. about that? Looks That's lovely. Cool. Alicia looks like you've got one friend. <laughs> To party down Mexico way. So next time you're planning some celebrations, chuck out your pasta parcel, get really a jelly and ice cream. Because we've got a fingertips fiesta where no one will see Esther. Yeah, stick with us, we've got some fantastic ideas to make your party go with the swing Latino style. Not now, bad mom. How about planting a prickly cactus? All it is is some paper mache balloons covered in paint, and then you can add a scattering of modelling clay wildlife. How cute are they? And it's always best to look the part. How about a moustache made from a scrap of fake fur that's stuck on with a plaster? Ow. And, and what about this? A Mexican poncho made from a decorated paper tablecloth. Hey, nice touch, Steve. And of course, you need to feed your guests, so how about spicing up the menu with some chili nachos? Or what about these mouth-watering tortillas? And perhaps you'd fancy a nice dip in some cool guacamole. And check this out, our Mexican sombrero cake, decorated with maracas. But if you really want your party to go with a swing Latino style, then you need a piñata, a bat, and a blindfold. Coming in first. Okay, I'm ready. Put this on just there, like that. And off you go. A piñata is a brightly coloured decoration stuffed with sweets and goodies. Now, the idea is to take turns whacking the piñata, and whoever breaks it open first gets first pick of the content. To make it harder, someone who isn't playing swings a piñata up and down, and it's probably better to play this outside. So if you want to make yourself a piñata for your fingertip fiesta, we've got the show-how to give you the know-how. Now, to make yourself a piñata, you need to first of all get yourself a balloon and need quite a bit of time because it does take a while to make a piñata. You need to cover your balloon in paper mache, cover it in quite a few layers because it needs to be nice and tough so it can withstand quite a lot of whacking. And for the paper mache, you need a mixture of half and half PVA glue and water, loads of strips of loose paper and then just get paste in. Now, before you add your final layer of paper mache, you need to tape a piece of string right the way around your balloon like that and then just get some sticky tape and pop it over the top of the string so it stays nice and securely in place like that and then you can add one final layer of paper mache and then use the string to hang it up to dry and when it has dried it's time to decorate it and have a look at this so we've covered ours with some cups around the side and here's how you do that you put the cup in the middle like that and secure it in place with some sticky tape a bit this side and let's do a bit this side as well and then you cover the whole thing in paper mache. Make sure you cover it in a few sheets because it's got to withstand all that whacking. And now it's time to cut open your piñata so you can stuff it with lots of nice goodies. Now be careful when you're doing this not to cut your string that you stuck on earlier. Instead, use it as a guide so you can cut your balloon pretty much in half. But do remember to leave a bit at one edge which you don't cut and this will act as a hinge for when you finally manage to smash your piñata open. Fern, I have the goodies hey. ready for filling. Here we go. We've got some toys. They go inside. They'll be great prizes. And some sweets. And what about some uh, party poppers and blowers? <laughs> They're always good. And some sweets. And we've also got some confetti too. This will look fantastic when it all falls down. That goes inside as well. Look at that. Um, do you think there's some more room for some more sweets? No, I don't. Um, you've now got to close it back up and seal it with some uh, sticky tape around the edge like that. And then go over the rim with one more strip of paper mache to hold it all together. And now it's time to decorate your piñata Mexican style. Now, traditionally, piñatas are very brightly coloured. You can use any type of paint you want at all, but we've used these emulsion tester pots, 
which come in some really gorgeous bright colours and they're pretty cheap to buy too. Now you may find the first layer will crack a bit, so just keep smoothing over it and it will look fine uh, eventually. Now also, as an added touch, you could use these little crepe paper streamers just to add to the end of your cups like that. Look very pretty. So there it is, ready for a smashing good fingertips fiesta. And if you want a reminder of how to make it, then why don't you check out the fingertips website. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. Or if you video today's program, you can watch it back whenever you want. Better still, just watch this. First thing you need to do is cover a large balloon in layers of paper mache. Then add a length of string all the way round before the final layer. For decoration, stick on some paper cups. Then cut the piñata in half, but remember to leave a hinge at the top. Fill your piñata with lots of goodies, but remember nothing too heavy. With a thin layer of paper mache, cover your join, then decorate it however you like. And of course, if you've got a bit more time... And a very large balloon... And loads of paper mache... You could make... An enormous one! So make sure your fingertips fiesta goes with a bang! <laughs> yes! Next time on Fingertips, find out how to make the fantastic two-half shock. It'll crush through anywhere. And in Food Fingertips, we'll give you the ABC of how to make Arctic banana chalk. And in Physics Fingertips, get ready for Blast Off with Balloon Rocket. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from today's program, then just check out the Fingertips website. The address is on the screen. So we'll see you next time for more Fingertips. Bye! See ya! In the show with everything you could ever want to make or do, right at your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And here's what's on today's show. Food Fingertips gives you the ABC of Arctic Banana Chalk. We show you how to have fun with fingertips face swapping. And in Physics Fingertips, get set for blast off with balloon rockets. And for all the fingertip details, you can video the show and play it back. Look on the website or grab your pen and paper and jot it down straight away. This is the fingertips two half shot. How about this bursting through your wardrobe or crashing through your bedroom door? Now, you're probably thinking it looks really difficult to make. Well, I'll tell you what, with the fingertips know how, it's a doddle. Because everything you need to make it can be packed inside an envelope. It's incredible, isn't it? And for those who don't believe me, let me show you. Look, this is all you need, and the big envelope itself. Now, first of all, you need to take your big envelope. This one's a size A3, and you need to cut off the flap. Once you've done that, these corners at the top here need to be folded over. You want to fold them just past halfway, press them down, and put a nice big piece of tape in place there so they don't flap about everywhere. And then do exactly the same the other side. Try and keep them quite equal, just past halfway again. A bit more tape. And as you can see, at the top here, we've left a bit of a gap, and this will make a nice shark nose shape. Just like this. Realistic, isn't it? Once you've done that, you need to open out your envelope and stuff it with some balls of newspaper. Now, you don't want to put too many in, just enough to make it a nice, firm shark head shape. And you see, this is why we've used envelopes, because they're nice and easy to stuff. There you go, Steve. Fantastic. Now, the next bit can be a bit tricky. What you want to do is get yourself a paper dinner plate and put it on the open end of the envelope like this, and then tape it in place. So let's take this bit down to there, like that. And this bit on this side. And don't worry about the rim that comes over the edge just around here because that comes in very useful and I'll show you how a bit later. And now you want to make your shark's jaw using your smaller envelope. This one's a size A4. Once again, you want to cut off the flap, but this time you do it when the flap's closed. You actually cut a bit of the envelope off as well. Once you've done that, you want to fold over the corners like you did in the last one. But this time, take the fold right down to the bottom of your envelope. Now, watch this bit. It's a little bit tricky because you want to make a second fold. You see the corners that you've got here? You just want to fold those over like that. Just get a bit of tape. Tape them in place. Try and keep them equal both sides so do exactly the same 
just there. And you'll see you get quite a nice round shape for your shark's jaw. And once you're happy with this shape, you can get your shark's head back. I right, thank you, Stephen. And then take your jaw, put it into place, and then you can stick it down. And it's now time to make the tail of the fingertips two half shark. So get yourself another A3 envelope, and as you did before, chop off the flap like that. And you're going to make a cone shape, but you must make sure you leave a, a gap at the bottom about that much. So you fold it over like this, all the way down to the bottom, and then tape that in place like this. Do the same on the other side. Remember, make sure you leave that gap at the end just there. So that goes all the way down. Take that in place as well. And just to neaten it up, you want to fold over this bit here. And again, a bit of sticky tape to keep that in place. And you'll now see at the bottom of the envelope, there's a hole. And this is where the towel fin will go. Then, as you did before, open up the end and fill it with balls of newspaper all the way to the top. And then get yourself a paper side plate and stick that on the top. Now I've made a tail fin and a fin out of a cereal box. And this tail fin here just slots into the hole that Stephen left earlier in the envelope. And the fin just sits right on top of the shark's back. You then want to cover your whole shark head and tail in paper mache. So paint on strips of newspaper using a mixture of PVA glue mixed half and half with water. And when you've covered the whole thing, leave it out to dry overnight. And once it has dried, it'll be nice and solid and you can paint it. If you want a reminder of how to make the fingertips too hard shark, then check out the fingertips website. We'll give you the address at the end of today's program. And if you click on top make, we'll even give you examples of how to paint it. How about yellow or even green? And don't forget, you can also use wildlife magazines. They've got some really good pictures of sharks and you can copy the colours from in there. I'm going to get painting. Alright, you do that. Now, if you'd like to have a go at making the fingertips two half shark, you can watch back the show if you videoed it today. You can check out our website. If not, grab a pen and paper right now, because here's a recap. Fold down the corners of a large A3 envelope to make the head shape. Stuff the envelope with balls of newspaper, then tape a paper plate over the open end. Make the jaw by folding a smaller A4 envelope. Take the other big A3 envelope and fold it to make a cone shape. And once again, stuff with balls of newspaper and then tape a paper plate onto the open end. Add a tail fin and a fin. Cover it in paper mache and it's ready to paint. And then it will look something like this. It's fantastic, isn't it? And you can even make little baby sharks using A4 and A5 envelopes. Oh, and I promised to tell you what the rim around the edge of the plate was for, didn't I? It's for pinning and sticking your shark to any surface. So once you've made your two-half shark, you can crash him through anywhere. Because this is the part of the program where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends that you can find around your home. Now today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to tie. And this is all it takes, just that. Not a lot of stuff. Not a lot of stuff, is there? But it is a top, top make. And you've got to try and guess what it is under the minute. Are you ready? Of course I'm ready. Okay, here all we right. go. On your marks. Get set. You're not going to start yet, are you? No. All right, start now, go. Okay. All right then, take some rice and pour a nice big pile into some clear wrap. A bit, oh, a, bit, a little bit more. There you go. Just wrap it up into a parcel like this. Ten seconds so, already okay, gone. Okay, okay. Now just cut off the top so it's nice and neat. Get yourself a blue and just slice Your the end off. Time like is that. running out for this 20 seconds. This could take some time to fix. It's quite tricky. Just squish the whole thing over like that. There we are. Oh, rice spillage. Whoops. There we 25 go. 25 seconds <laughs> gone. Okay. I work well under pressure. Don't worry. There we go. Another one. And uh, ready. Oh, 30 seconds bit. gone. Stop the clock! Ooh. Thank you very much. Look at that. What do you think? You've got to know what this is. Well, I'll tell you what, if you pick the right colours, you've got some squidgy eyes. And if you make three, one, two, three, you've got yourself some juggling balls. They're really cheap and easy to make. They make great presents and they'll keep you busy for hours. Go on, get juggling, Steve. Okay. There we go. So go on, see if you can beat the clock and make some fingertips one minute juggling balls. 
This part of the show is Food Fingertips, where over the next few weeks we'll be giving you some great ideas that are fun to make and great to taste. Coming up now is a Food Fingertip which combines the taste of the tropics with the cool of the Arctic. And it's as easy as A, B, C. We're going to make chocolate banana lollies. First, find your banana. Then, peel your banana. And dispose of skin. Carefully. Then, insert your lolly stick. You'll probably notice how easy the lolly stick slips in. The trouble is, it slips out just as easily. So what is the solution? The freezer. Pop your banana into the freezer and freeze. Yes, leave the banana in the freezer for a few hours. It is now frozen solid and securely stuck to the stick. So you've had the A, you've had the B, it's now time for the C, chocolate. And you're going to have to melt it. And here's the fingertips way of doing that. Pour some recently boiled water very carefully into a big bowl, about a quarter way up like that. Then get your bowl of chocolate that you've all already broken up. Use as much as you want and put this carefully into the bigger bowl like that. And then give it a stir until it starts to melt. And when your chocolate has melted, it will look like this. And it's now time for the dunking. Now, to make the dunking of the frozen banana easier, we've put our chocolate into a glass. Got me frozen banana? Are you ready? I am. Here we go. Dunk it in. The chocolate's on it like that. Just twist the chocolate round. Now for the hundreds and thousands. There's that side all the way round. And there you have it. Look how the warm chocolate is chilled by the frozen banana and the hundreds and thousands are locked in place. Perfect. Not quite, Stephen, because you told everyone about the ABC, but what about D? Oh, the D. I'm sorry. Delicious. So feed your face with some fantastic food fingertips. That is nice. Well, what do you think? I've got a little bit of Stephen in me. And I've got a little bit of fun in me. You see, video technology like this is becoming more and more easy to do. But don't worry if you don't have a TV studio handy. Because we're going to show you a fun fingertips way to achieve the exact same effect. Just using card and magazines. Oh, that's better. Now, first of all, you need to decide whose face you're going to play around with. I, of course, chosen Mr. Stephen Mulhern. Now, you need to get a picture of someone looking straight ahead with not too much hair going onto the face. You need to stick it onto some card, put some sticky back plastic over the top, and then cut it out. Once you've done that, you need to go through lots of magazines and pick out other faces which are looking straight ahead, and then cut out pairs of eyes, mouths, nose, ears, and hair. Once you've done that, stick them onto a piece of card, so they're nice and firm, and then cut these pieces out. Once you've done that, you're ready to have some fingertips fun face swapping. Let's give Stevie a nice girly eye there. And quite a big nose, some luscious lips for Steve as well. A big eye and quite a small eye and a nice big smile. That's a nice eye. And how about a little one there? Look at that. Ah -ha. Now, you could try making a video sequence of your funny faces by putting a video camera in and out of record when your hands aren't in shot. And it's quite a good idea to put it on a tripod so it doesn't wobble around and also use a remote control as well. Oh, he's got a big nose. He's smiling. He's frowning. Oh, he's looking up. Another smile. Huge nose. Big blue eyes. And if you've got a computer, then you can do something similar. Now, first of all, you need to load a picture of yourself or a member of your family into the computer. And when you've done that, some programs will let you uh, stretch the face like that. And then you could even shrink the face like this. 
or make it even bigger like that. Ooh, bit, bit too, bit too big. Let's bring it back down like that. Now the program we're using here on fingertips is very special because you can actually change like hairstyles. Let's give Fern a new hairstyle. Let's see what fits. <laughs> I think um, yes. Let's go with that one. Now let's change our eyes. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's nice. Yes, very nice. And maybe a new nose. Should we go for a new nose? How about? That yeah, I think that one suits. <laughs> and finally, the mouth. And there's a whole new fern. Fantastic. Now look, if you want to have a go on this, we put um, our pictures on the website. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. But promise me one thing: you won't make us look too silly. Oh come on, guys! I said not too silly. We're gonna have a balloon race. Five. Four, three, two, one, blast off! Come on! Yes! I won! Yes! yes! What are you about? I so won! You did not win! I, I won! won. Races, I this won. is obviously in no I way to a balloon race. race. Excuse me! Even I won! Excuse, Excuse me! Hello! Excuse me! Off! Get off! Go! Go! Oh, off! Off! Man. Well, was it the longest in the air, the furthest travelled? How do you know who won? Well, this is Physics Fingertips, the part of the show where we show you how to have fun with physics. Here's how to control that balloon's power and have a proper race. We're going to show you how to harness that random movement and create a jet-propelled elastic thruster. First, get yourself a straw and a piece of string. Make sure the straw can run easily along the string and tie one end of it to the finishing post, which for now will be where you are. Then, run the straw along the string to make sure it has a knot-free run. And when you're confident about that, you need to get yourself a balloon. And blow the balloon up. And then, don't tie the uh, neck of the balloon. Just keep it in place by wrapping it around a pencil and putting a peg on it like that. Now what you need to do is tape the straw to the middle of the balloon so it's evenly balanced like this. There we go. And when you've done that, you need to take the peg off. Keep hold of the neck because you don't want any of the air to get out. Then pull your string taut and let go of your balloon. Whoa! Not bad! But now, meet the thruster Mark II. It's simple. It's scientific, it's superb, and it cannot be improved. Improvement number one. I've used nylon instead of string. Less friction. Improvement number two. I've used two balloons instead of one. I've put a piece of cotton aside in my straw and stuck a balloon to each side. Improvement number three. Looks. I've added this little wavy man and some lovely streamers. All right, Phil. Well, look, it's all very pretty, isn't it? Come on. Let's get on with the race. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Yes! Woohoo! So, go on, if you want to make your blaster beautiful. Oh, not. Have some physics fingertips fun and get racing. Next time on Fingertips, stretch your imagination. We'll show you how to make the fingertips stretchy jaws. Now, they look tasty. They are tasty. But would you believe it? They're cakes. And we'll show you how to make them. And we show you how to make a watertight water bomb and paint bomb. Well, that's it for today's Fingertips. If you want to make anything from today's show, then check out the Fingertips website. So we'll see you next time for more Fingertips. fingertips. Bye! See ya! Bye bye! to make and do right, right to your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And let's have a look at what's coming up on today's show. In Food Fingertips, we show you how to use meringue and ice cream to make this delicious cheeky monkey. 
In Little Fingertips, we give you the know-how to print your own funky fingertips t-shirts. And in Party Fingertips, we've got a great game for a Paradise Island party that will have your friends bending over backwards to play. And for all the details on today's makes, you can video the show and play it back later. Look on our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Oh, it's looking good, isn't it? Great show! Now, last series, you may remember that we showed you these. The Fingertips video labels, where you could, and still can, by the way, actually download them and print them off from the Fingertips website. And we are going to give you that address at the end of today's show. Now, with them, you can actually stick them on your videos and label up all your favourite Fingertip top tapes. But this series is even more jam-packed with exciting shows. So, to keep you a copy of Series 2, rather than not with a stack of tapes like this, we've come up with this. The Fingertips Video Storer. No, we haven't found a way of cramming loads of VHSs into a small box because you don't have to. No, we've worked out that you can record the whole of Series 2 on two three-hour VHS tapes that fit perfectly into your ready-made video slots just there. An awesome archive of well over a hundred ideas. And it may look very high-tech, but in fact you need hardly any techno know-how to make it. And here's how you do it. First, get two washing powder boxes and stick them together like we've done here. And you also need a large margarine tub. Now, the lid will work as your TV screen, and the pot works as the lump at the back. Then get two video covers, stick those back to back, and then make a hole large enough for them to fit inside just there. Then the lid to a drinks bottle works as your handle. And all already, it is looking good, isn't it? It's looking very nice. And now, for the aerial on top, what you want to do is get a washing up bottle and cut off the top of it. And then get two bendy straws and put a polystyrene ball on the top of each one. Then thread that through the top of your washing up bottle and flatten over on the other side. Get a bit of sticky tape and that should just hold it nicely in place. There we go. Next, simply paint your TV and video authentic colours. And when it's finished and dried, add pen details like your TV channels. And we've gone one step further and made a stand for ours. Look at that. And once you've painted your aerial, sit that on top there. And your videos will slot perfectly into here. Brilliant. Can you believe how realistic it looks? Yeah, put it in your room and show all of your mates. So, set yourself up and make your very own fingertips video story. And don't miss out on any fantastic fingertip ideas. That's just what I would have said, Stephen. Got a minute? Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends from around your house. Today, it is my turn to make. And it's my turn to tie. And this is all it takes, look, a bit of tissue paper. And this, trust me, you're going to love. This is my favourite one. It is very cool. Now, we're not going to tell you what it is just yet, but see if you can guess along the way. Stephen, I see you're flexing there, yes. so you must be ready. I'm ready. What's that? Okay, you're Three, ready. two, one, go! Right, first thing I need to do go is just make a cross on the paper like this. Come on, Stephen. There's I'm no on. way you're going to guess what this is. I'll make it cross. You're quite an expert at this, aren't you? I am. I'm very You're good. Come your new hobby. Okay, now turn the paper over and I make like a tray shape. You're coming up for 15 seconds. That's 15 seconds. A quarter of your time. No te problemo. And uh, just put up this one. So making like a tray. There we go. How much over time? That's now on to 25 seconds, Stephen. Okay, There's no just, turning back. Just Keep pinch going. the Come corners. On. Pinch the corners. You'd never 30 guess 30 seconds. Half time. Okay. And do you know what I'm going to say now? Set with me at home. Stop the clock. On 36 seconds, exactly. <laughs> well, if you're thinking what I thought when I first saw this, and that it's an incredibly weak tray, incapable of carrying anything, then you're wrong. But if you thought it was an aerodynamically efficient precision aeronautical instrument, you'd be right. Because what Stephen has here is a flying machine right at his fingertips. Captain Mulhern chocks away. Here we go. Woo! Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. I want to have a go now, so I'll tell you what, let's give you a recap. First of all, oh, hello. First of all, once you've um, folded across into the middle of your paper, you're right there, like this, you need to fold up the edges <laughs> like a border. So do the two long sides first. And that's my leg, Stephen. Uh, then you want to do the two shorter sides at the top and the bottom. Once you've got to this stage, you need to pinch all the corners together so you end up with your little tray. Then, one minute. He goes. Yeah! Oh, look at that. Yes. These flying machines only take a minute to make, so give it a spin and try and beat the clock. Oh. 
This is Food Fingertips, the part of the program where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste. And today we're monkeying around in the kitchen to make a delicious dessert. We know you're gonna go ape over. It's a orangutan, and the best thing about this cheeky monkey is there's no cooking whatsoever. You're gonna need to get your fingertips on some meringue nests, two ripe bananas, some ice cream, another ripe banana, some chocolate buttons, and some grapes. And you're also gonna need a bowl that's safe to place in your freezer, and you need to line it with cling film. Then take four of your meringue nests and save these for the eyes and the ears. There you go, Stephen. And put the rest into a large bowl. So another four should be enough, and then crush them all up. Then add two of your bananas, chopped up. Put them in there with a the mixture. And some ice cream, my favourite. So let's spoon some ice cream into there as well. There we go. And then give this whole mixture a good stir. Oh, look at that. It's all sticking <laughs> together. Very yummy. Then you want to just spoon this, once you've stirred it nicely, into your bowl, which is lined with cling film. So let's plop that into there. Can get a bit messy now. You just want to eat it. Try, I know. Just want to try and aim for the bowl and get as much in as you can. There we go. And once it's all in there, pop it in the freezer for a couple of hours. And before you take it out of the freezer, you need to make a base for your face. So get the meringue nest that you put to the side, and these will do for the eyes, and these will do for the ears. Lovely. Then you want to get the ice cream and just peel away the cling film. That does look so yummy, doesn't it, in there? Mm -mm. <laughs> and just lift it up. Look at that. Just pops out. And then position it over the meringue nest. So let's place it just about there. And when you're happy with the positioning, you can actually peel away the cling film. So let's peel it away. Look at hey, that. Hey, and now you can add your pupils on your eyes, which are your grapes and some chucky butter nostrils. Yummy. And check this out for the final added touch. How about half a slice of banana for the mouth? <laughs> and then half a banana for the eyebrows. And there he is. You're done. A meringue tang will open up any lunchtime or make the perfect party piece. Check these out. If you don't make banana ice cream, how about adding raspberries to your meringue? What about the chocolate cheeky chimp? Instead of using meringues, use biscuits. So go bananas and monkey around in the kitchen with meringues, ice cream and loads of yummy fruit. It's fun food, the fingertips away. Have you ever wondered where you get hold of a fantastic, funky fingertips t-shirt? Well, sadly, at the moment, you cannot buy them in the shops. But you can make one because this is Little Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you how to make something, recycling stuff you'd probably just find lying around your house. And today, we're revamping a plain old t-shirt. And it couldn't be easier. All you have to do is go to the Fingertips website and print off one of the Fingertips hands. Now, we'll give you the address at the end of today's show. Now, you want to print off the hand and the logo onto special printer paper that you can get in most craft shops. Now, you mostly already notice that the writing and the hand is back to front, but by the time you iron it onto your t-shirt, it becomes the right way round. How cool is that? Now, if you haven't got a computer at home or a colour printer, don't worry, because you can still make a funky T-shirt, which is slightly more personalised. Using fabric paints. Now, they come in loads of different colours and textures. You can get fluorescent paints, also glitter paint, and pearly colours in squirty tubes. Now, get your plain old T-shirt and flatten it out and put a piece of card in between the two layers so the paint won't seep through to the back. Then, in a tray, you want to put some fabric paint. We've gone for a bright fingertips pink. Now, it's time for the messy bit. In goes my hand. Oh, it feels lovely. And then, make sure you've got lots of paint on there. You just want to squish it straight onto your T-shirt. Here goes. Right in the centre. There we go. Give it a good press down. And there you have one lovely handprint. And now you just need to leave it to dry and read the instructions on the fabric paint packet because some of them need ironing to stay permanent. And when it is dry, you can add some detail like some pearly fingertips writing with swirly bits and you can also add some swirls onto the fingertips just using these squirty paints. They're really easy to use and give a great bold line. And how about a crease in the middle of your palm? Gorgeous. What do you think, Steve? I think it looks very good. And of course, you can make your ones any colour you want. How about a green fingertips hand with pink outline? Very nice indeed. And you could make one for every day of the week. 
experimenting with different colours. So whether you go to our fingertips website and print off one, like this, or get paint your hands on and make it personal, why don't you give it a go and make a little fingertips funky t-shirt? for an exotic tropical extravaganza guaranteed to transform any frosty get-together into a scorcher. So if you're planning a birthday party, why not try something a little bit different with a fingertips Paradise Island party? Why not decorate your room with tissue paper, flower garlands and colourful exotic birds? You make these by cutting out a bird shape, adding paper feathers and a curly tail. And you can get this curled effect by just running a ruler along your card like this. As for food, the possibilities are endless. Try sizzling barbecue food, like chicken skewers and fruit ones. And how about serving ice cream and fruit in a pineapple boat with banana sail? You could even make your very own fruity cocktails. And a good idea for a cake is a paradise island with lapping waves and a chocolate boat. Dress in grass skirts and nice bright t-shirts and make sure all your friends look the part with their very own tissue paper flower garland. But which Paradise Island party would be complete without Paradise Palm Tree Limbo? The idea of Limbo is to see how low you can go. Start with the pole at the top and try to walk underneath, bending over backwards. As the pole gets lower, so the game gets harder. And you're not allowed to put your hands down to stop yourself falling over. Whoever manages to go the lowest is the winner. We bend over backwards here on Fingertips <laughs> to come up with great ideas for you to make and do. And Paradise Palm Tree Limbo has to be one of the best, don't you think? Definitely. Now, if you want to make it, you're going to need to get your fingertips on a load of paper or polystyrene cups, and you need to paint them brown. I'll get doing that. All right, and while Fern's doing that, here's how to make the palm tree bases. Really easy. You get two bottles, fill them with sand, and in each, put a garden cane... And um, bamboo is brilliant for this because it's strong and sturdy. Now, you need lots and lots of cups, 32 all in all. That's 16 for each palm tree. So, rope a few mates in and it will take no time at all. Then, once all your cups are painted, you want to get a sharp pencil and just poke a hole in the base of each cup, like that. And you want to thread the first two cups face down over each bamboo cane. And this will hide... The bottle tops. And we've used two different shades of brown there and we've alternated them so it looks more realistic. And then you want to put the rest of your cups onto your cane facing upwards. And each time you add a new cup, you want to pop a little ball of newspaper in there. So when you put the next cup on, it'll be slightly raised like that. And you want to use 14 upward facing cups for each palm tree. And for your leaves of your palm tree, simply cut a leaf shape out of crepe paper, fold it in half, and then cut from the outside in to make your leaf look more realistic. Then open out your leaf. Let's see how this one looks. Yeah, very cool. And now get two bendy straws, and you want to join them long end to long end by just squeezing one into the other like that and have the bendy bit just hanging over one end and then stick your straw in place. Then add your leaves by putting a bit of sticky tape on the bendy end of the straw and just popping that inside your top cup. There we go. Then to cover the bottle at the bottom you can use some crepe paper to look like grass. So just stick it down in place and keep wrapping it all the way around until you can't see the bottle anymore. Then you can add some colourful flowers to make it look even more exotic. So, if you want to limber up with the game of Fingertips Palm Tree Limbo, then why don't you check out the Fingertips website? We'll give you the address at the end of today's programme. All you do is click on Party and all of the information will be there. But of course, if you video today's show, then you can watch it back whenever you like. But if you do have a pen and paper handy right now, let's go over it again. Paint 32 polystyrene cups a palm tree brown. Fill two plastic drink bottles with sand and stand a bamboo cane in each. Thread them onto your bamboo canes, the first two facing down and then facing upwards. Remember to put a ball of newspaper in between the cups, cut some big leaf shapes and finish off with grass around the base. And some lolly sticks will hold a garden cane in place. So pop that in your top cup 
and place that like so. And as the competition hots up between you and your mates, you can move the lolly sticks and the cane down lower. Come on in, Fernie. Let's see if you can do All it. All right, then. Here goes. Here we go. Oh. Oh, yes. that was oh. close. Oh. Go on, Stevie. <laughs> so it's your go now, and let's make it a little bit lower. All right. No problemo. Right. Yes. Easy when you know how. So throw your very own fingertips Paradise Island party and see how low your friends can go without cheating. And next time on Fingertips, make your own load of rubbish bin. The ideal place to stash your trash to recycle into fantastic Fingertips makes. And in Food Fingertips, find out how to make a belt and bag you can eat. In Fun Fingertips, we'll show you how to make a great indoor pitch for a game of beach football. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from the programme, then why don't you check out the Fingertips website? The address is just there. And we'll see you next time for some more... Fingertips! See ya! Bye! Can do right to your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And let's check out what's coming up on today's show. Find out if Fern manages to beat the clock in today's one minute make. In food fingertips, find out how to make a belt and bag you can eat. And in fun fingertips, we'll show you how to make a sun drenched indoor pitch for a game of beach football. And for all the details on today's makes, you can video the show and play it back later. Look on our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Here on Fingertips, we show you loads of cool ways of how to recycle old rubbish into top makes. Like a cat food box into a snappy crock box to keep your camera in. Or a shoebox into a sneaker keeper to keep your trainers fresh. Or a shoebox and some milk cartons into a keeper of the keys lucky dip game. The question is, where do you store all your rubbish for recycling? In the fantastic fingertips load of rubbish bin. A classic shiny bin complete with lids, handles and yucky overflow. So the next time you see something that you want to make, just reach inside your load of rubbish bin and you may just find the junk to make it. I'll be needing these later. For the main body of the bin, get an A1 piece of card and a roll of kitchen foil. They want to mark the height of this, so draw a point at the top of your kitchen foil, either side of your card, draw along this line and then cut along it. And this section needs to be covered in tin foil. So shiny side facing down, roll it out and stick it down. And that will look very realistic. Fold your card round and place it into a foil dish. And here's a fingertips top tip. Get yourself two paper clips and put one this end and then one this end. And this will just help you keep it in place when you're sticking it down. Now, to make the ridges on your bin, get a ruler and draw around it onto some corrugated card. Now, this is slightly too long for your bin, so shorten it off and then round off these edges like that. And then cut out this shape. And use this one as a template to make eight more. Now, it's time to cover them in tinfoil. And you do this by wrapping them a bit like a present. So, have your foil shiny side facing you and then fold up the edges and then the ends, and this should give you quite a nice, neat finish, like that. Then, once you've covered them all, here's a fingertips top tip for you. Stick your first ridge over the join on your bin, and then stick on the other eight with an equal distance between them. 
Now, to make the bin lid, you need to get your fingertips on a small and large four tray. I did say that'd come in handy, didn't I? And for the lid handle, what you do is cover a piece of corrugated card in tin foil, like you did a second ago. Make a crease at either end and stick that onto the small one. And to make it look even more realistic, why not add a couple of bolts either side? Then stick this one, glue around the edge, onto the large one. Like that. It's time now to make the bin's handles. So, first up, for the handles brackets, get a sweet tube and cut it in half and cover both halves in tin foil. Then, get four bendy straws and slot them together to get a nice rectangular shape and cover this in tin foil as well. And then you just want to slot your sweet tube bracket inside your straws like that and push them together. Then, you just stick both your handles, one to either side, of your bin. And there we go. This is looking great, you know. Let's it just pop the lid on top. It looks so realistic. Very isn't cool, it? isn't it? Okay, it's now time to make the overflow. For this, you need to cover a tray in cling film and place your bin at one end and then get some PVA glue in a bowl and a whole bottle of food colouring. And you're going to pour the food colouring in. This is great. Look. Instantly colours the glue and give it a good mix. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. That looks lovely. And then you pour this around your bin and all over the cling film. So, I spilled some on the table. That doesn't matter. <laughs> Wipe that up later. So, you pour it all the way around and then you add your rubbish. And the bottle, this can be the first bit of rubbish. And you want to add your rubbish when your overflow is still wet. So, just chuck it all in and put whatever you like in there. Leave it to dry overnight. And in the morning, you should be able to peel it off your cling film. Oh, look oh, at straight off. Super. Very nice. Now you can add your bin liner. And you're ready to start storing your rubbish. So if you'd like to stash your trash in a fingertips load of rubbish bin, you could check out our website. Just click on Top Make and you'll find all the details there. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. Or watch back your video if you've recorded today's show. Or grab a pen and paper right now, because here's a recap. Cover a sheet of card in foil. Curl your card to fit into a foil dish base and secure it in place. Cut strips of card and cover them in foil to make the ridges. Stick them evenly around the bin. Make your bin lid by sticking together two more foil dishes and attach a cardboard handle. Make the bin handles from bendy straws and half a sweet tube covered in more foil. Thread the straws through the tube and stick one either side of your bin. To make the overflow, add food colouring to some PVA glue and pour it onto a sheet of cling film. Add your rubbish and wait for it to dry. Now just pop in a bin bag and you're ready to store your makeover rubbish. So from old trainers to old tights, stash your trash in a fingertips load of rubbish bin. What are we going to do with these? They're my pants, thank you. Because this is the part of the program where we show you how to make something in under a minute using bits and pieces you can find around your home. Today is my turn to make. And it's my turn to tie. And this is all it takes just that I tell you nothing more. It's not a lot of stuff. Now, we're not going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to try and guess as Fern's making. But I will give you a clue. If you do it right, Fern, I'll give you a round of applause. Ah, I see. Okay. Three, two, one, go! Special technique to this. Get your napkin and you just want to get the corners and twist. Five seconds have gone. Five seconds. Okay, Stephen, don't panic me and stop tapping me, please. Okay, and ten seconds have gone. Stop tapping me. Is that putting you off? Like slightly. And fourth, twist. There we go. Next. Fifteen seconds have gone. Do that again. <laughs> and then oh. you just need to add the eyes and oh. the mouth. Twenty-five Stephen. seconds. Stop! Oh, that's very good, but do you know what it is? Well, let's tell you, it is a lime dancing crab. Come around with a claws now, oh, yes, yeah. okay, now. But how do you make it dance? Using a lime. Here goes. Lime, crab on top, 
man, you have one lime dancing crab. <laughs> it does look great, doesn't it? And they're so simple. Now, we've made a few more of these. Check these ones out. Uh, now, the, anything round or heavy will make them dance, but the slight pointiness of a lemon or a lime just gives them a crazy movement. So, if you like our crabs, check out our website where we have a whole load of designs that you can print off. So, let's see if our limes can dance in time. Here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, hey, yes! Look at that! It's a beautiful thing. That's fantastic, isn't it? So there we go, well our lungs can sort of dance in time and you can definitely make them in time. So why don't you give it a go and see if you can beat the clock. What do you think of my new handbag? Look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? Very tasty. It's funny you should say that. Look at my wristband and my belt. Very nice. Now, what would you say if I told you it was good enough to eat? I don't think I'd believe this. So I think you should prove it. Go on, Fern. Not a problem. Mmm, delicious. You see, this isn't just any old leather. No, no, no. This is fingertips edible leather. Now, it looks like leather. It does, doesn't it? It looks real. You can also wear it as leather, but the difference is, with this, you can eat it too. And it really is delicious. It tastes just like apples. And that's because it is apples. It's apple leather. Well, this is Food Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste, and this really is. Hey, I'm glad you said that, because I've got a little job for you. Just come over this side, right? All I need you to do is just peel these, core these, and chop them, all right? Now, while Fern's doing that, I'll tell you what, you need to get your fingertips on. Well, first of all, you need ten cooking apples. You also need some apple juice, some cinnamon, and some honey. Oh, done it. That's amazing. Hang on, how did you do that so quickly? Trade secret. Now, once you've peeled and cored your apples, you need to stew them with the apple juice. So pour it all in there. A couple of cupfuls should do it, and then stew them until they're soft. Then before you do the next bit, you want your apples to cool down. And when they are really cool, you just want to spoon your mixture into a colander over a bowl and just drain away some of that excess juice. And when they are strained off, you want to get your apples as smooth as possible. And the easiest way to do that is use a liquidizer. Now, you may want to get a bit of help with it. And as soon as the apples are in, then give them a spin. Then just taste it to test it out. Mm. I think a bit of honey is needed there. So add a bit of honey to make it sweeter. And how about a pinch of cinnamon to give it a nice flavor? There we go. Then you just want to stir the whole thing up. You then want to spread it out onto a baking tray as evenly as possible. And when you're happy with it, you want to leave it to dry. Now, this can take a while, but you can speed it up by popping it into your oven overnight at its lowest possible heat. And leave your oven door open just a little bit so some of the moisture can escape. And then once you've done that, you need to leave it for another couple of days in a warm place so it can dry out some more. And when it has dried, fingers crossed, you should just be able to peel it off the baking tray. Here it goes. Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> just comes off. Now, if your one's a bit sticky or tacky, just rub a bit of corn flour on it and it will be fine. Do you know, it really does feel like real leather. Now, what you have to do is decide what you're going to make. If you want to make a wristband like my one here, all you need to do is get some scissors and start slipping. It's that easy. And it cuts really beautifully. Look at that. You can cut out any shape at all you want to make different patterns and designs. And you can even use a real hole punch to make holes so you can thread it up and tie it together using licorice lace. And the more holes you make, the more different designs you can do. Check my one out. What do you think? It's all right, isn't it? And how about this? Make bigger holes and you can actually weave licorice all the way through or even thread loads of little squares together like that one there. And if you'd like to make a bout like mine, you can stick sweets on using icing and plait licorice together to make the whole belt a lot stronger. They're fun to make and incredibly great to taste. Oh, yes. She beats one man, and she beats a second. She's now clean through to the goal. She aims, she lifts her eye, drops her shoulder, she shoots. Oh. She goal, yes! <laughs> yes, forget the terraces and your astroturf. The coolest place is the beach to show off your silky soccer skills. All right. So here on the Fingertips, we've come up with an all-year-round pitch that will keep you playing whatever the weather.
fingertips beach football. Yep, it has the skill and excitement of table football with the added fun of palm tree goalposts and a sandy pitch. Yep, it looks fantastic, it's fun to make, and it started out like this. Just a few cardboard rolls, garden canes, and a couple of fruit punnets. And a cardboard box, and you're halfway to making beach football. Now, the bigger the box, the bigger the fun. And the first thing you want to do is take your two fruit punnets, these are going to be your goals, and put them either end of your box, and just mark where they sit there and there and you want to actually cut down these lines and with the flaps these will be the base for your goals to be stuck on your players are half a kitchen roll you need six players that's three for each team so once you've cut your three kitchen rolls in half get a pencil and some modeling clay and just above the halfway point you want to make a hole so just push right the way through and this is where your stick's going to go so you can control your players when you're playing beach football your sticks also need to go through the side of your box. So you need to make four holes either side with a sharp pencil and use one of your players to line up your holes because you want to make sure that there's space at the bottom for your players to spin round. So put the garden cane through one side of the box, through your player and out the other side. And on one end, you want to put an elastic band and this will act as a buffer to stop the garden cane coming back through your box like that. And on the other end, you want to make a hole in a cork and put the cork on this end and this will act as your handle. And then just alternate them throughout the box. So you've got a cork, elastic band, cork, elastic band. Now, once you've done all the sticks, you'll have six players ready to play. Now, you could play beach football unpainted, like this. Or... Like this, a painted and decorated version. Now, we've gone for a yellow colour pitch. We've even, look, added sand and painted on shells to give it a beach feel. And for our palm tree goalposts, you've painted some sweet tubes and then put some paper leaves on top. And the best thing about them is you haven't got to glue them in place. Look, <laughs> you pop them on top and then just put the lid on. How cool is that? It's good, isn't it? And, of course, paint your players too. Give each team a different colour strip. And we've painted up our ping pong footballs that just like a beach ball. So let's chuck it in and let the games commence. Now the idea is to score five goals before your opponent does. So let's give it a try, Stevie. Come on. And the, oh, cool. oh, 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 the oh. faster you, you spin your players, the harder you hit the ball. So go on, show off your soccer skills on a sun-drenched beach with a fingertips beach football. And even if it's raining cats and dogs outside, it'll be raining goals inside. And it's a goal! Next time on Fingertips, we'll show you how to recycle your old socks into the fantastic Sockless Monster. In Green Fingertips, find out how you can turn a glass of water into these beautiful ice light bowls. And in Fun Fingertips, we get totally spooked with a game of ghostly golf. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from the programme, then check out our website. The address is on the screen now. And we'll see you very soon for some more Fingertips. See ya. Bye. right at your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And your countdown to Christmas starts here with a show fit to burst at the seams full of Christmas ideas. So let's have a look at what's coming up on today's show. Find out if Fern manages to beat the clock in today's festive one minute make. In Food Fingertips we'll show you how to make some bite sized mini Christmas puds. And we'll give you the know how to make a portable snog machine. The Fingertips Puck and Mistletoe. For all the details on today's makes, you can video the show and watch it later. Look on our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Isn't winter weather beautiful, Fern? Oh, lots of lovely snow and ice. Apart from when you're stuck in the middle of it. Oh, oh and it's freezing in there. It does, doesn't it? Snow shakers. You can put anything in them. They're really easy to make. 
and they make fantastic presents. Now, if you want to make one yourself, you need to get hold of one of these. It's a screw lid jar. Now, first of all, take off the lid and put it flat side down, and then get hold of some modeling clay. And you want to mold it into the top of your lid all the way around like this. And here's a fingertips top tip. Make sure you leave a nice gap around the edge of your lid. Uh, this way you can actually screw it back on in just a second. Now keep flattening it out into like a hill shape. There we are. And make sure it's nice and secure in there. And when you're happy with it, start smoothing it off. And here's where you can use your imagination. If it's a present for somebody, you can personalise it. If they like skateboarding, you could add a little skateboard in there. Or you could make whatever you like out of baking the oven clay. How about this fingertips hand? How cool is that? Or you could make some Christmas characters or Christmas decorations. Or you could just find Christmas decorations from around your house and use those. That's what we're using today. Basically, you can put anything in there that will sit happily in water. Then. Pop it on top of the modelling clay and just mould it around the bottom of whatever you put in there so it sits in nice and securely. Now, to make your snow fall gently, get a hold of some glycerin. Now, this is like a, a syrupy liquid that you can buy fairly cheaply from your local chemist. And you want to pour the same amount of glycerin and water into a jug. Let's pour it all in. Look, you can see how syrupy that is. Get it all in there. And then you add some glitter. In it goes. Hey, that looks cool, doesn't it? And then you give it a good stir. There we are. And then you pour this into your jar. So let's pour it in. In it goes. Oh, wow, look at this already. <laughs> And now it's time to put the snow shaker together. You, know, you might want to put this over a tray in case you spill any glycerin and water anywhere. And just dunk your snow scene into your jar and then screw on the lid nice and tightly like that. And now it's time to give it a shake. Let's have a look. Wow! Oh, look at that! <laughs> Looks like there's a right blizzard in there. And don't forget, if you've got internet access, you can check out our fingertips website. Just click on Top Make for all the details of how to make the snow shaker. Try your hand at making the skateboard, Christmas in a jar, or even the fingertips version. So stay out of the cold. And make your very own fingertip snow shaker. Got some in it. Because this is the part of the program where we show you something to make in under a minute using bits and pieces you can find around your home. Now today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all it takes. Simply that, nothing more. Not a lot of stuff. No. Now, uh, trust me, right, you are going to absolutely love this one. <laughs> and uh, we're not going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to try and guess as we go along. Are you ready? I'm a bit nervous because one takes a lot of speed, but fingers crossed. Here we go. Yes. Three, two. One, go! Okay, piece of green card. Now I just need to fold this kind of in half and mark roughly the halfway point. And then this folds over to that, that there. Ten fold, seconds of okay, Stephen, don't panic me, please. Fold it back like that. And then this side folds over there. And this bit folds back Come here. Up. 20 seconds. This bit 20 seconds have gone! Oh. Come on! Oh, okay. this is a big clue. Big clue. Now Have a look. this pattern needs to be drawn on. Oh. And then some careful... Cutting. Oh, nicely along the line. Well, Stephen, well, I'm working with speed. <laughs> I can't work with accuracy too. Thank you very much. Can I have 35 seconds? Okay, okay. Just don't leave house. All right. Okay. Fine. Fine. Get away. Can I have 40 seconds? Okay. 40 seconds have gone. Will she do it? All oh, the glue's going on. Oh no, glue problems. <laughs> I'm having glue problems. <laughs> Coming up to 50 seconds. Oh, oh. 10 seconds left. No! What's she doing? <laughs> Eight, seven, six. <laughs> oh my <sighs> word. 55 seconds. Thank you very much. That's such high speed. Um, are you going to tell me what it is? I will. It's a 3D tree card. Yay! <laughs> cool. is that, it is good, isn't it? So if you fancy making one of these, why don't you check out uh, the Fingertips website? Uh, we'll give you the address, as always, at the end of today's program. Just click on One Minute Make and all of the information about all the folds are on there. Now, if you've been a little bit more adventurous, you could try making some big cards or even ones with some tinsel and glitter glue. So why don't you give it a go, try and beat the clock and make your very own fingertips 3D card. Christmas Day is great, isn't it? Not only do you get presents, you also get to play loads of games and you get to eat a huge Christmas dinner. Mm, it's great, isn't it? You've got turkey and you've got Brussels sprouts, potatoes and 
Cranberry jelly and gravy. And, oh, just when you're full to the bursting. The Christmas pudding arrives. Oh. Oh. Now, normally you can't even manage a mouthful, let alone a whole Christmas pudding, but you could if... It's a fingertips mini Christmas pud. Delicious. And they're just bite size. <laughs> Yep, this is Food Fingertips, the part of the program where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste. And these mini puds are so easy to make, you haven't got to do any cooking. So, Stephen, you can start by making the puds. Okie dokie. Now, the first thing you need to do is get your fingertips on one of these. It's a moist fruitcake. Now, you can buy one from your local supermarket, or better than that, go to the Fingertips website. We'll give you the address at the end of today's show. And on there, there is a recipe so you can make your own cake. Now, wash your hands, and then take a bit of the cake and just squeeze it into a ball shape like this, and just roll it in the palms of your hand. And keep going until you've used up all of your cake. And now it's time for the icing. Yep, you want to mix up some icing sugar and some water, but add your water gradually so it's not too runny. And grab a puts, please, Steve. They're on their way. Good. Okay, I'm just going to spoon a little bit on top of one of my puds. Go for this one here. Now you've got to be quite careful with this. You want to put too much on, just drizzle a little on. And then, if you use another spoon, you can just neaten it off and smooth it over slightly. There we go. And now you can decorate your mini puds with, of course, berries and holly made from coloured marzipan. Now, these ones we made using a cutter, but you can do them by hand as well. And we just pop that on top. Look at that. Very realistic. Very nice. Now, if you're a bit like me and you don't like fruitcake, then why don't you make mini chocolate puds? Again, we've got the recipe for this on the Fingertips website. And believe it or not, there's no cooking involved for these either. So whether it's fruity or chocolatey, how I go at making the fun fingertips mini Christmas puds. They're just bite size. It's all very well and good at the Christmas party, standing underneath the mistletoe waiting for a kiss. The only problem is you've got to wait for the person that you fancy to come to you. But not anymore with the fun fingertips pucker mistletoe. Yes, this is a portable strong machine, which means you can go to them. It's cheap and easy to make and will guarantee those Christmas kisses come your way. First up, you need to get hold of a headband. These thick and chunky ones are the best type to use. And you also need some fuzzy pipe cleaners. And these ones look good in red and green because they're nice Christmassy colours. Then get both colours and just twist them together like this. You get a nice spiral effect. And then grab a pencil and twirl it from the bottom right the way up to the top of your pencil so you get a spring. And you want to do two of these. And once you have done that, you want to attach one to each side of your headband. And you want to do this quite securely because you don't want any slipping when you're kissing. How are you doing, Stevie? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, fine, fine, yeah, yeah, go on, carry, carry on, carry on. Okay. Uh, then you want to attach your mistletoe. Now, you could use the real stuff, but the plastic stuff is even better because it's cheap to buy and it will last forever. And if you want to go glitzy this Christmas, just add a nice scattering of glitter. It looks really lovely and frosty. So, next time you're in one corner of the room and the person you fancy is in the other, like poor Stevie, get some fun fingertips, pucker mistletoe. Pucker up and move on over. Ah, there you are. Well, they do say that if you, you can't beat them, join them! <laughs> oh, come back! Oh. Next time on Fingertips, Countdown to Christmas continues here with a fantastic 3D advent calendar complete with treats. Find out how to turn a lolly stick and a cork into something brilliant in under a minute. And in Green Fingertips, we get creative with veg and make a funky t-shirt. That's it for today. Now, if you want to make anything from today's Christmas show, then why don't you check out our website. The address is just there. And we'll see you again soon for some more things to make and do right in your fingertips. fingertips. See Bye. Ya. See ya.
can do right at your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And today we've got even more fantastic ideas for you to make in time for Christmas. And here's what's coming up on today's show. In Techno Fingertips, we'll show you how to create some very individual Christmas cards. Find out how you can turn a lolly stick and a cork into something impressive in under a minute. And in Green Fingertips, you can get creative with veg and make a funky t-shirt. For all the details on today's makes, you can video the show and watch it back later. Look on our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. At Christmas time, no home is complete without one of these, an advent calendar. A nice pretty picture with little doors that you open leading up to Christmas. Now these are okay, but on fingertips, we've come up with something a little bit more exciting. Yeah, the countdown to Christmas starts here with a fingertips advent calendar. Now, not only does each daily draw contain a treat, oh lovely, lovely, but if you turn it round, you start to build up a picture. Which will only be revealed on Christmas Day. It is good, isn't it? And it's a good job we're starting early, as you need to get your fingertips on 25 empty match boxes. Then get some PVA glue, and you want to stick all of your match boxes together. So put quite a nice lot of glue on. And you want to end up with five columns and five rows. Now, take your block and draw round it onto a piece of paper so you have a rectangular shape just like that. And then put the box back in place, and you want to make marks in between the match boxes along the sides and then along the front like this and you want to do this all the way round and then join up all of the dots so you've got five rows and five columns to make a grid and now you're ready to draw your Christmas picture now you can do any Christmassy design you like as long as it fills the whole of your rectangle and we've also put some ideas onto our website for you to have a look at. Just click on Top Make and all the designs will be there. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. And once you're happy with your design, get colouring. Very Christmassy. Now it's time to cut up your masterpiece following the grid lines that you've drawn in there. So just try and be quite neat with this and go right along the lines. And then once you have cut them out, one by one, stick them back on to your match boxes. Let's get these in and you want to do this in order so that you recreate the picture once again and you may need to trim them slightly just to neaten them up. And when all of your pictures are stuck on, as an added touch, cover the top, bottom and sides with coloured card. Now we've gone for red and green, it's more Christmas isn't it? And we're nearly finished. We nearly are but now we just need to turn all of the drawers around the other way and on this side you want to add a paper fastener for a handle and a number for each day of the month. And do this to all of your drawers, but number them randomly because then it makes them more fun to find. Now you're probably thinking that if I turn this round, you're going to see the picture, but you're wrong because look, the design only works one way round. And to make your advent calendar even more fun, why not add a present to each box? So that just pops in there like that. I've even got a pack of magic playing cards for Stevie Magic. Ah, oh, I like <laughs> it. So why don't you give it a go? Make one for yourself or even make one for one of your friends. Uh, how about making the fingertips version? You can make any design you like. Or what about this? A mini calendar. So go on, start your countdown to Christmas with a fingertips advent calendar. <laughs> Hey, how would you like me hanging around on your Christmas card? Or me? Well, this is Techno Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you how to put technology to creative use. And today we're using a computer programme to go ball ball bonkers and making these fantastic personalised Christmas cards. Check out this podgy pudding. Or this silly snowman. Hey, I'll tell you what, he's an handsome chap, isn't he, huh? Hmm. Now, making your faces rounded like a bauble or a snowman's head is guaranteed to get a laugh from your mates, and it's really easy to achieve on a computer. All you need to do is get your fingertips on an old Christmas card and scan it in. Now, if you haven't got a scanner, don't worry, because on our website we've got some Christmas card designs that you can download. Next, you need to find a photograph of the person you want to use for your Christmas card. I'm using Mr Mulher. Uh, now, you can scan your photograph in or take it with a digital camera. Now, however you're going to do it, you want to open up your Christmas card and your photo on a program like we've got here on Fingertips. And this one actually allows you to adjust photos. And this program also allows you to cut out the face of the person you want to use, make it rounded and stick it onto your Christmas card design. So first, grab the selection tool that allows you to cut out circles and then 
drag this over the face of the person you want to use and now you've got the option to slightly soften the edges and this process is called feathering. Then you just want to move your face over onto your Christmas card design and you may need to change the size of it to fit the bauble or snowman exactly. Now you can also use a tool that will make your faces not just round but spherical. Check out these crazy faces. Look, how about you being on a Christmas balloon? Oh, and look at Fern on Rudolph's <laughs> nose. Very nice. nice. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't have access to a computer because you can just cut out a face from an old picture and stick it on a card. Or if you're good at drawing, how about sticking on any photo and then drawing around it? So don't hang around and get creative with your computer. With Techno Fingertips Flat Face Christmas Cards. <laughs> Got a minute? Because this is the part of the program where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends you'd probably find from around your house. Today, it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all it takes. I need no more. Just That's that yeah. very strange <laughs> array of things you have there. Yeah. Now, we're not going to tell you what it is just yet, but see if you can guess along the way. Mr. Mulhern, are we ready? Have yes, that's a clue as well, to honestly, yes, <laughs> I'm ready. Yes. Okay, <laughs> three, two, one, go! Okay, first thing I need that's to do... Two seconds gone. <laughs> okay, get Hurry a bit of modelling clay and just roll it round in my hand, Six like seconds. that. Okay, all right, normally you only tell me when it's ten, but you tell me when it's well, I thought I'd rush you today. Okay, I'll need a bit of a bigger one, come on. A bit more? Okay. No, right. How am I doing? It, oh, it? That's 16 seconds. Right, that's that done. Right, now, what do I do? Okay, so put this down here like this. And da da da. Da da da. I'll hurry up. You now have um, 30 seconds left. Now, that's that half time, Stephen. Now, just half snap this half very already. carefully like this. I would just right. remind you, this part of the show is called the one minute to make, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, don't be getting flashed by Stephen. This is in the court, like this. How okay, 40 seconds gone. Okay, so 20 seconds left. Another one in. Make sure they're it? nice and in line like that. This room there, how am I doing? That's now. I need another cold oh. stick! He's broken! He's giving me another cold <laughs> stick! Quick! <laughs> oh, he's back! <laughs> oh, five seconds left! No, really. Oh no! Five, four, three, stop! Two, one! <laughs> Can I oh. just say that was exactly one minute? Oh. And you just need to. No, I'm it that. was on, wasn't it? Only it was on. I'll let there. you off. So Go on, I'll let you off. Lynch there. Oh. That was all a bit of a panic, wasn't it, Mr. Mulhern? Oh. And he did it in exactly one minute there. Right, shall I tell you nice. what it is? Yes, please, because it's not very Christmassy, is it? No, it's not very Christmassy, but if I add... See, this is what they call a cool balancer, right? If I add a Christmassy design like this and like this, it now becomes... A nodding snowman! Oh, that's brilliant! And you could try out lots of different designs using a balancer like this. How about a waving Santa Claus? He works in exactly the same way apart from his hand stuck to the cocktail stick. Or a nodding Robin. So why don't you try and beat the clock and beat your very own fingertips nodding Christmassy character? I think they're nodding in agreement, Steve. This is Green Fingertips, the part of the program where we show you how to make something for or from the garden. And today, we're talking sprouts. Oh, yuck. Don't you be so sproutist. Sorry. Actually, I know what Fern's talking about because most of us don't like sprouts, do we? But they are an essential part of Christmas. So this got us thinking, what could we possibly do with sprouts other than eat them? Well... It's trendy, it's funky, it's the coolest idea this Christmas. It's... The Fingertip Sprout T-shirt. How cool is this? It's all the rage with glitter and sparkles. It does look great, doesn't it? It suits you. Thank you. <laughs> and it is made from sprouts. So, get a hold of a few of these little fellas and start chopping. And then you want to get your fingertips on a plain T-shirt. Now, you want to put a piece of card in between the two layers to stop the paint seeping through to the back. And then, with some chalk, you want to mark out the word sprout. Now, you can do it in any style you want. I'm going to just do mine on the diagonal. There we go. O, U, and T. Then, you want to get half a Brussels sprout and dip it in some sprout coloured fabric paint. And then, get printing over your chalk lines until you're happy with your design. And when you are, follow the instructions on your fabric paint because some recommend actually ironing on it to stop it running in the wash. And don't worry if you don't have a t-shirt with a plain front because you can always print on the back. And once you've done that, it's time to spruce up your sprouts. Yep, you could add some glittery outlines and even sequins. Basically, the design is up to you. Hey, you could go totally cool with a khaki t-shirt printed in orange and outlined in gold. 
Remember, on fingertips, sprouts don't always belong on the dinner table. So be the envy of Christmas with your very own funky green fingertip sprout t-shirt. That's it for today. Now, if you want to make anything from today's Christmas show, then why don't you check out our website? The address is just there. And we'll see you again soon with some more things to make and do right, right in your, your fingertips. fingertips. Bye. See ya. See ya.